Top Picks is brought to you by Quest Trade, where you can trade stocks from 95 cents. David Burroughs is here from Barometer, and he's brought with him three fresh top picks. American International Group, AIG, top pick number one. We've been talking about financials in the States. Yeah, we, we, we've been looking for financials that are trading at a discount, that have gone through significant restructures, that are seeing improvement in their underlying units. Mm -hmm. So AIG is the largest P and your property and casualty insurer in the U.S. Uh, of the life insurance companies, they are also the largest in life and retirement. All of their underlying businesses are showing slow improvement. Uh, they have gone through their recapitalization. They've just initiated a dividend. Um, and we think that you're likely to see a share buyback come. It trades at about 0.7 times book. Mm -hmm. um, their return on equity has been low, about 6%. They're on track to move that towards 10 over the next two years. Uh, and this is one where we think we're going to get good dividend growth and better than expected numbers. They just beat the estimate by 30%. There's tremendous leverage inside this business. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's, it's um, a higher, I would say, higher risk uh, mm -hmm. situation, uh, but it's a big engine. It is a light dividend. It's a dime, but that's less than 1%. It's very small, but that's a beginning. Mm -hmm. okay? The Fed made it very clear to some of these very large financials, you're not going to pay until we say you're ready to pay. Right. They're showing they're ready to begin to pay. A uh, top-ranked analyst on the stock says it'll be 60 bucks in a year. Do you believe it? Like I said, there's big, big earnings leverage in this business. Top pick number two, Johnson & Johnson. As we discussed, healthcare is a popular space for you right now, and pharmaceuticals playing a role in that. Yeah, for a long time, we've liked healthcare. J&J uh, &J is the biggest diversified healthcare company in the world. Mm -hmm. They have arguably the best pipeline of drugs going forward over the next two years. They have virtually no patent expiries to 2016. Um, so this is, a, this is a wonderful business. For those that care about these kinds of statistics, they've raised their dividend every year for 50 years, mm -hmm. right? And they only pay about 40% of their earnings out, so the payout can go higher over time. What's the risk to the investment thesis here? I think that the, the risks, you know, are operational uh, in general. Mm -hmm. um, but think of it this way. Uh, if the Chinese decide that they're going to get rid of their one child, one family, right? This can be a fairly significant driver for a company like Johnson & Johnson. And we certainly know what the demographic story is in the U.S. So it's a player on emerging market consumer. Uh, and it's just very, very high quality for investors, not speculators. All right. So two of these top three picks have been American, but you do have a Canadian one. It is tied to the consumer in an indirect way, Linamar. Yeah. So I think a couple of months ago, we talked a lot about Magna mm -hmm. trying to take advantage of the pent up demand in autos. Uh, the run rate now we're looking at for auto production in the U.S. about 15 and a half million cars, which is a step up. Average car is 11 years old. Mm -hmm. So Linamar sells into the drivetrain. They've historically built capacity and then filled that capacity and become much more profitable in doing that. They have about $2.5 billion of new orders over the next couple of years. Mm -hmm. Big beneficiary of a lower Canadian dollar, uh, makes them very competitive. They sell almost entirely into the U.S., about 80, only about 20% is Europe, and what is Europe is specifically German-focused. So we like to start with one company in a group, which was Magna, and we added Lear and Linamar, and there's a very good upside to the earnings. Doesn't sound like this is a dividend growth story, though. No, this is, this is a valuation play, and it's, uh, and it's a focus in a very specific secular theme, mm -hmm. which is a, a rebuilding of uh, a replacement of auto. The exposure to uh, Europe, particularly interesting. We got that data out of Germany uh, today showing that exports came in better than expected. Yeah, you know, we like Germany. Uh, we don't particularly love Europe. And the fact that they have such limited exposure in Europe versus others, I think, is really attractive. The last thing is three big new engines being launched by OEMs, and they're participating in all three. Full circle back to why you like the states more than Canada. It is up 21% over the last year uh, versus a modest return here at home. Are we overvalued at all? Uh, I think that that's, that's always going to be a question mark. As long as the data shows that we are seeing slow, steady improvement mm -hmm. in GDP, and as long as we are not seeing risks from inflation, uh, I think that probably we're okay. And uh, it's, 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 it is a very dynamic, deep market, lots of choices. I'm not saying go buy everything but you can find some very specific companies and specific themes that, that look quite attractive. David, good to have you with us again. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Michael. David Burroughs has been our guest, President and Chief Investment Strategist at Barometer Capital Management.
That is it for this edition of Market Call. Of course, you can go to bnn.ca in about 30 minutes' time to catch uh, the replay. And the Encore presentation airs Monday through Friday at 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 o'clock Pacific. You can join, uh, usually, Mark Bunting live Monday through Friday at 6 p.m. Eastern for Market Call tonight. I will be in his stead for the remainder of the week. Of course, please consult a qualified financial advisor before making any investment decisions. I'm Michael Hainsworth. Follow me on Twitter. Have a good day. Thank you.